A wizard is never late. Nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. Hi, I am here precisely when I mean to be. Good evening, good afternoon, good morning. Where's the inking? Jiminy, you want the link? I'm just gonna be, it's gonna be a working stream, so uh, I can send out links to peeps if they wanna hang out, chill out, and uh, chat while we draw. I'll try to turn this light on. I've been having some technical issues of, of late. There we go. All right. This is where I keep all my files on this on this thumb drive. Mike, Mike is no wizard. You shall not pass. I am a wizard. I'm a wizard with the very cheap. Oh, let me see if Walden's up. I didn't even check if Walden was around. Oh, I'll check Edwin the uh, too, but hey, let me see if Walden's up. Walden, oh Walden, oh Walden, Walden. <laughs> oh shoot, that's his fan art page. Dang it. Where's just Walden? All then. Hold on. There he is. Working stream. I don't even know what time it is. What time is it? Oh my gosh, it's 11 o'clock. This is pretty late. This is a pretty late time to get started. But, uh, ah, here we are. Here we are. And, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been doing this pretty much all with a, a, a brush, this page. Which, you know, I've been kind of gnipping, gnipping around. For those who are old enough to remember gnip, gnip. But uh, this this cheapy little thing, this I, I got this because Walden Wong told me to get these Pentel fine brush. I don't know if this is the same tip. No, this is the medium, I think. I don't think I've used this. One. Oh, yeah, I must have. It's got black ink on it. But yeah, these are, boy, these are resilient little suckers and they can give you a good tip. So, ah, bring us the inks of Walden Wong. Let's see, Walden message. I'm rushing to get to these. Oh. Oh, fine. <laughs> Walden is doing a video every day for Inktober like a madman. Um... But you know what? You should all be uh, subscribing to Walden on his channel anyways. Walden. Oh, why am I why am I leaving YouTube to search Walden? Walden. Oh. I'm gonna grab the link real quick and uh, copy it and send it over here so you all can participate and go subscribe to Walden on YouTube. Walden Wong, art, tutorials, tri tips, tricks, comic book industry, interviews, and reviews. Good job, Walden. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I wish I had the dedication to make the videos he does, but I'm just so, so slammed doing everything else. Um, but look, I think this is coming out pretty, uh, pretty tight for all doing all brush. If it's not focusing. Ah, oh, there's the focus. Now, uh, the ink is a little bit diluted, which I kind of hate to do, but it'll come out all right when I uh, after I scan it in. Um, I did something different today, which is I, I I went the Weldon route on doing layouts, the Kim Jung Gi route, where I just started drawing instead of. Instead of actually, uh, here, I'll... next time, cheers. Um, instead of, who did I send it to? I sent it to somebody on YouTube. Uh, oh, I sent it to the group, right? I sent it to the group? Yeah. So instead of, where's my, 
I'll drag it over here. Make it so you guys can see. Share screen. Here we go. Instead of blocking out and building up all the characters, you know, like balls and cylinders and structure and all that stuff, because I already know all that stuff intricately and intimately in my head. Um, I just kind of scribbled out the figure work, kind of like Weldon does. It's very dynamic. I mean, the the figures are much are very loose this way. I like it. I like it. I'm gonna I'm gonna practice this technique. Of course, you have this big goofy area here where this dude's leg is way too long for his torso. So I actually had to select that and move it back a little bit. Um, but yeah, this guy, this is the first guy I did. It just felt it felt good. It's it's the pose is a little quirkier than I would have done otherwise. And I don't know. I kind of dig it. I kind of dig it. So I think I'll be practicing this kind of uh, this kind of layout for a bit. See if I can get the hang of it. Um, but I think it looked okay. Is this a pre-recorded live stream or a real live stream? Well, there's no such thing as a pre-recorded live stream, Jeff. Yeah, there is on Twitch. Wait, no, uh, that's not a live stream. That is a pre-recorded show that has oh it's called a premiere it's called a premiere so at any rate this is a live stream live stream thank you Jimmy is Walden Wong Weldon's channel no Weldon is Walden Wong's I mean Walden is Weldon's um Walden is Walden Weldon is Weldon and never the twain shall meet actually I don't know if they've met that's Kind of a moot point. Hey, have you all seen the uh, Kim Jong Geek video that I posted today? I don't know. I'm, I should go check out how it's doing, but uh, it was doing pretty well earlier. And very exciting, exciting times are afoot in the Blacklist universe. So hopefully, you all got a chance to check that out and see the dope, the dopeness of the new Kim Jong Gi cover. For Lone Star 3, Mind of the Monster, planning on launching that here very soon. What is Weldon's channel called? Uh, Matthew Weldon, I think. I think, but don't quote me on it. Weldon Art, maybe? Weldon Art? Uh, Weldon, if you're watching quietly... Could you just get in here and draw with me? I just put how to ink because I'm going to be... How to ink with brush. And obviously I'm not going to ink straight lines like this with a brush. So forgive me if I get some of the technical stuff out of the way. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a great big liar about inking with a brush. But some things need to be inked with a will or a pen or something, you know something and then same similarly 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 i need to ink some things with the one of these little doohickeys uh we call it a maca we call it a maca one of these days when i have 10 million subscribers i'm gonna buy new these things but right now they're really expensive so these things are like 20 bucks a pop just for and then like they always get run over by the wheels of my of my chair. And then they get all jacked up, and uh, it's a it's a whole ordeal over here. And uh, I hope my kids aren't making too much noise that you can still hear me. You're not making any noise, really. You can confirm you're not making any noise, or you cannot confirm that you're not making any noise. So I'm fairly certain I can confirm you are incorrect on your assertion. Uh, why, there's so much noise in this house. I don't know why Jojo's screaming. He's, he's playing zombies, man. 
I think he's screaming like the zombies in, in uh, Call of Duty Zombies. I think that's what the scream is all about. <laughs> all right. All right. So let me uh, let me get some of this. This has got to be round. A full round round. Oops, that's too big. Up. Oh, I need another stencil. <sighs> <laughs> because this has to be more like straight circle instead of ellipse. What? What? <laughs> oh my gosh, still with the screaming. I hope you guys can't hear that in the show. In the shoe. I hope the shoe isn't too loud for you. Micah, mommy's calling you. I know you heard her. Now these tiny little lines, I don't really have to use ellipses on. I could just eyeball it, but what the heck? You're gonna bake a pie? Big bang! Big bang! Big bang! Oh, good, you can hear it. Your kids are too loud. Sorry, Andrew. Sorry. Sorry. Micah, mommy's calling you again. <laughs> All right, get that one. Get this one. I thought you were going to show us how to ink with a brush, Mike. I'll get to it. Okay. I'll get around to it in a minute. I just got there's there's things you got to do first before you get to the brush part. All right. There's important things going on here. You got to pay attention. Pay attention to the man behind the curtain. Oh my gosh, it's so loud. Just nonstop. I don't understand why it's so loud in my house. The sounds of life, ladies and gentlemen. The sounds of life. Just before I strangle them. I don't need to do this, but I'm doing it anyways. Hee hee ha ha. Um, Alright, the chaos is fun. Oh, thank you. Mike's silent streams are the opposite of typical. I true. You hit it? True, 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 true. Uh, you hopped in a little late. That's fine, Andrew. That's fine. You can be late. All right. Anything else? You know what? Let's just tackle that little fella first. I don't know what mommy's saying. All I know is there's so much noise going on right now. I don't understand it. Thank you, Michael. Closing the door will at least cut down on the noise from outside of this room. Yeah. It will not, however, cut down on the room, the noise inside this room. And right, I think. That's all I need to worry about with the quill for this panel. Oh, well. Or not the whole panel, just this figure. Right. These are fun little characters I designed to have, like, these pulleys that power up their uh, exosuits. They're steampunk knight outfits. I don't know how you how you how you call them exactly. We call them uh. You should buy a shot. Um. A fully charged. Oh geez, what do they call them? Juggernauts? Are they juggernauts? No, not juggernauts. Um. 
Ah! Hold on, let me open the script. Let me open the script and figure out what the heck they were called. Did you go to art school, Mike? General Grudge, I did not go to art school. I took I took art in junior college. I took art in high school. I took art in junior high. I took art in elementary school. I learned from my mother's art books because she was an artist, and I just kind of grabbed her art books, whatever she happened to have on hand. That's why I know how to draw horses, and I have since I was very young because one of her art books was How to Draw Horses. So I had a thirst for learning and limited resources. Although eventually I did get how to draw comics the Marvel way and start collecting comic books and started drawing comic book heroes. There we go. Random late night stream. Correct. Correct. Off world. Off world. What on earth does off world even mean? So sorry, I may have ignored the answers. Did you guys all check out the Kim Jong Gi video? Jungi! <laughs> Jungi announcement cover. Lone Star 3, Mind of the Monster. Pretty epic day. I was very, very excited to get that in my email. So, uh, we're gonna, Kelsey and I, and probably a couple other artists, are gonna be watching the, uh, the video he sent me of him doing that in, uh, We'll do like color commentary on uh, on artists in awe of another artist. So so be here or be uh, queer. Be here or be queer for that one. Because that should be fun. Kelsey Shannon is going to be coloring that beautiful beautiful Kim Jong Gi cover. Cannot wait to see that. Cannot wait to see the other two artists I am impatiently waiting to see covers from. <laughs> I even had a promise of a cover from one guy, but legendary artist. Another another 80s. Well, not another 80s, but uh, Kim Jong-un is not really an 80s icon, but an 80s iconic artist. He's like, yeah, I can do that. And then I don't know. Thus far, he has he has failed to uh, respond post agreeing to do a cover. So maybe he's just never on Facebook. That's probably the case. And I need to find some other. Oh darn it! I know people who know him. I should I, I should I should probably track him down. I'm using a refiller refillable watercolor brush, but I am dipping it. Jiminy Cricket, you haven't seen the Kim Jong Gi cover? Goodness gracious! All right. Hold on a second, guys. <sighs> Why is this taking so long? So probably Wait, didn't I post it on Facebook? I mean, Twitter. If you want to learn to use a different Did I not post it on Twitter? That'd be funny if I didn't post it on Wait. Twitter. Uh, Kickstarter will probably ban you in advance Just because they think you hired a fascist dictator to draw your comic. <laughs> Wrong, Kim. That's Kim Jong. First of all, that's like the difference between Jim and John. All right, come on. What the heck? All right, here's. Here it is. Full screen for you. All the Kim Jong Gi Lone Star goodness you can shake a stick at, or shake a brush at, or shake your booty at. Um, there it is. 
How did you not see that video? It's the only video I posted on this channel today. I can't really troll you on this. Jiminy Cricket is uh, befuddled. Befuddled and beside himself, uh, screaming, what? With lots of stars, hearts, hearts in his, in his beady little eyes. <laughs> uh, excited there, Jiminy? For a Kim Jong Yi cover on Lone Star? I'm buying that cover. Yeah, I'm going to do... Uh, you know, since I got this cover, I decided to do the Virgin variants again. So, looks like there's going to be more than uh, a couple covers for you to get. You can get the Virgin. You can get this. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I'm going to do the. I might just do them as add-ons. I don't want to do them. I don't want to offer them up individually. Uh, although, I don't know. I got to figure it out. I will figure it out soon, no. soon ish. Since I have to actually put the finish putting the campaign together, I already started, but I wanted to get the covers in first before I started, uh, before I finished the campaign because uh, I don't want to launch a campaign without all my covers in place because that didn't work out so great last time waiting for someone to do a cover um actually i had a couple of issues with that on a couple of different campaigns so i'm not doing that anymore my covers are done before i solicit them what? as long as i don't accidentally buy another evs cover i'm fine <laughs> Well, I don't think that'll be an issue this time around. Uh, I'm not even going to make the EVS covers that I have left available on uh, the next campaign. Um, so, yeah, if any of his drilling fanboys really, really want a copy of that book, they're going to have to get it off of eBay or something. So, all right. <laughs> all right, all right. Stop, stop sharing that screen so Jiminy can stop drooling on his computer. Uh, apparently, Mike has unblocked some people on Twitter recently. Indeed, I have. I have. I even unblocked a couple of them on YouTube. You see, without without the the uh, the pushers. Um, encouraging the constant defamation of my character um there's a certain group of people who who uh, are not no longer partaking that bollocks so that's nice that is nice so it was time isn't that strange the people that i was at war with are actually um nicer to me apologetic to me more so than uh the people i was supposed to be friends with isn't that weird in fact i could probably i could probably keep blocking liam <laughs> oh you want to get in here jalapeno I don't think E or W even mention you and Doug anymore. Uh, I get reports. <laughs> I get reports from people. Um, it's oddly, it's it's because like I'll go on Oz's stream once in a blue moon, and they're always like, Ethan still talks about you. I think he wants you back, and I'm like, I don't care. And I I don't go watch and see if they're they're reportage is accurate because I don't care. So, uh, I don't know. And I don't, I haven't watched anything war campaign and I don't know how long. But yeah, I even unblocked Ro.
Do, 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 do. Send me a link. A link it shall be. Uh, gotta get over to Twitter. Get on over to. Ow! Where, dude? You freaking nuked that that account. Dude, Rainy's coming. <laughs> it's gonna be difficult to send you links. <clears throat> Jaja, haha, <laughs> p money. Uh, I don't know where to send you like jalapeno, jalapeno. Can't go nuking accounts and then telling people to send you links. Oh, Discord. Ah, ah. Don't go breaking my heart. Oh my gosh, what is your name on Discord, dude? So many people. Send me a message on Discord and I'll bounce you back. Send me a massage. A massage. Block siege just to see what happens. No, I would never do that to that young lady. It would break her heart into a million tiny pieces. I posted in the mod chat. Okay. All right, what? links in the mod chat for anyone else who's in the mod chat. And I sent it to you personally, too. There you go. In Soviet Russia, Twitter deletes you. It's true. It's true. It's Pravda. It's Pravda. Oh, my gosh. Whatever happened to him? What was his name? Richard. Um, Richard. Oh, throwing a blank. He was like one of my favorite guys on Saturday Night Live way back in the 80s. He's the one that he was did the uh, did the news for a while. Mick. Yes. Aloha. A giant pink nipple for Aloha. <laughs> it's zoomed in. Yeah, that's disgusting. There's no nudity. Yeah, not not like a uh, not like a Kevin. <laughs> That's so bad. Oof, Kevin. Uh, I'll never be able to watch those movies again. <laughs> uh, and it uh, and it's flaming, so you know it's infected. I went down, 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 and the flames went. Burning <laughs> ring of fire. Give the whole new meaning. The burning ring of fire. Oh, next time I talk uh, to Kevin, I'll get to sing that to him. Yeah. Oh, that was an excellent episode. It was great. Edwin being back was ugh, icing on the cake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I miss, I miss Edwin. Well, like uh, you've Clive done a, a fine job like... co-hosting, but uh, Edwin, Edwin's kind of—he's got a certain certain style. Yes, he uh, he he lends himself to generosity to degeneracy while somehow pretending that he's incredibly offended by all of it. He plays the straight man really well. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Calliope and I was like, I hope you don't feel left out. I'm like. No, I'm probably more excited than anyone else that Edwin's hosting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very excited. And I've always just been warming the seat for him. True, true that. Whenever he comes back, I will gladly recede into the ranks of the draw along. You have my sword. And my axe. <laughs> now I gotta do it. I had a, I had I a button. 
my sword. And you have my bow. And my axe. Oh, is that the clip? And my <laughs> burning ring of fire. <laughs> well, I was I was thinking uh since it's 101 next week, probably do another plus one episode. Do another what? Plus one episode. Uh, it's Batman. Because Batman it's, oh, plus because one. It's, oh, a number 101. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah she. Like, uh, I think we did one punch man and one plus one. One punch man plus one. Yeah. Yeah. And then we did a Batman plus one, right? Yep. Batman plus one was a good one. That's where uh, Doug to Naple drew Batman and, and Catwoman. Catwoman. Yeah. 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 Which, how Aaron Lepresti gets as much crap as he does. I mean, no one remembers Doug's drawing. <laughs> yeah. That was, that was something else. Indeed. Yeah, Nick C's asking who Kim Jong Gi is. Uh, he runs North Korea. No, that's Kim Jong. <laughs> uh, I'm kidding. Very, very bad. Well, uh, what was that video you posted today? That was the video of me seeing that Kim Jong Gi art for the first time. Oh, so you officially announced it? Yep. That's cool. I was just too excited, man. Mm. I held that secret for for months and months. So, whatever. Waiting yeah. for it. Waiting for it to be done. On top of all the other secrets I seem to be holding. Yeah. What could possibly be left? Uh... The other pros doing covers. Did oh. I ever? Did I ever mention who they were? I don't uh, think isn't I isn't what you're working on right now still a secret? Oh yeah yeah yeah. Okay. But not for if... long. He's already filmed the announcement video. So. Uh, Have you seen that yet? No. He's got to edit it and all that stuff. So. Oh uh, yeah. Um. Uh, did you say Kelsey was going to watch the Kim Jong Gi video with you? Yeah. That should be cool. Right? Yeah. Uh, you you and Kelsey should do like a regular show just talking the industry and stuff like you did that one time. Well, he's doing that with uh, Richard Friend. Richard Friend? <laughs> yeah. Is Richard Friend a friend to you? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. You should jump on that one. Well, it's, it's the Kelsey and Rich show, so I don't really want to. I don't want to step on their groove. Mm, true. But um, I don't know. Maybe Rich can make it tomorrow. We'll see. Maybe. Cool. Yeah. You doing a bullpen tomorrow? Um, more than likely. More than likely. Very good. Yes. That should be fun. Uh, I don't know if you've seen it recently, but this game uh, Among Us has been pretty fun. Oh, yeah? yeah, it's a Steam game. It's like five bucks, but uh, you can kind of invite people like you did with the Jackbox thing. Oh, have you guys been playing Among Us? Yeah, boys. On the phone? It's free on the phone? They've been playing yeah. it on the phone. It's free on the phone. Really? Yeah, no, it's really good. Five bucks on Steam. It's just yeah, it's really goofy, but... um. Basically, it's like who's there's a bunch of guys on a spaceship and you're playing with real people. And one of you is an imposter. So, oh, the so imposter, mafia. well, like the other people are supposed to keep the spaceship running. And then the imposter tries to like sabotage it and kill people. Mm. And it's, I don't know, it seems really fun. So you're th- saying we should do an Among Us DMQ? Uh, a lot of, a lot of guys in the YouTube circuit have been doing it, actually. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's very popular on Twitch. Teeny, tiny little dudes with no detail on them whatsoever. Yeah. Honestly, uh, in the time of a game 
that you play, you could probably draw the whole sequence uh-huh. in a panel. <laughs> That's how little detail there is. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, though. Yes, Victor, he knows what the secret project is. I am sworn to carry your burdens. Yep. I don't like the artwork for Among Us. Well, people don't go to the Among Us for artwork. Right. We should steal the code and reskin it with better artwork. Oh. Huh. Isn't that what they've been doing like since Nintendo and Sega and all that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, see. Well, you worked on Deuce X, didn't you? Deus X. Yes, I worked on Deus X. Out of God. No, that's not what that means. It's uh, God from. God from, that's right. God from did. Deus Ex Machina means God from the machine. That's right, that's right. You're Latin slipping, man. Uh, I'm a bad Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> I am not a Catholic anymore. Well, it depends on what the definition of Catholic is. It is when uh, the tongue has many serrated edges. Wait, what? And it is spread amongst fur. What? Catholic. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Going down, 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 yeah. <laughs> Kevin <down>. Sharp. <laughs> you could just hear like his face fall when he realized what was going yeah. on. <laughs> he was like, what? No. no. <laughs> uh. uh, we suffered long enough, Mike. Tell us. No. No. Just, just get fact, your pre orders. Uh, he, he didn't, he didn't uh, share out. Um, he he doesn't even want to share out my channel until we make the uh, make the official announcement, and then he said he's gonna blast it out all the time. So there you go. Yes. Oh, uh, Gabrielle Geski's in the chat. Man, she came in at the last minute last night. Really touched off that whole episode. Touched it off. I don't. Know. She she was the she was one of the highlights for sure. That was that was quite a generous. Uh, Super oh yeah, there. man! Indeed. I was trying to think if she drew something. She drew something too, right? Yeah, she's a hell of an artist. Yeah. She get her on the show. I think sometime. she got. Uh, I give her a special mention. Yeah. I think is she on the fan edition? She should definitely go do some of this. But yeah, Gabrielle, once again, thank you for the for the centennial super chat. Yes, it it was centerific. Cent. It was the scent of a woman. <laughs> I, I've seen her artwork around, and uh, she seems to be in the in the community a bit. So, Gabrielle, thank you for being a part of the community here. Absolutely. 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 Yeah. 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 See. Mike, serious question. Do you think you could get Jeff Darrow to pencil a variant cover from Nick C? Dude, I haven't even talked to Jeff Darrow since the 90s. Whoa. So I've never even heard of Jeff Darrow. <laughs> <laughs> I know Rob Liefeld and Jim Lee. Speaking of Jim Lee, I was watching a how-to video by Jim Lee before I started this show, which is why I started this show, because I was so freaking irritated by his how-to video. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I love teasing you about Jim Lee. I was, uh. I was watching some of these other how-to channels that, you know, have millions of subs and stuff, and I'm like, you know, I want to I want to learn how to... If I'm going to, when I have more time, if I'm going to spend some time actually, you know, creating how-to videos um, that'll that'll attract that kind of uh, popularity, then I need to learn from people who did it. 
Well, Jim's got these how-to videos, but they're on another channel that has a bunch of subs already. Um, I can't remember the name of it. Uh, hold on a second. It's still on here. This got off all thing. Uh, VZA. Uh, I've never heard of them. Yeah, they have... I don't know how many subs they have. They've got well, 229,000 subs. But um, Jim... Somehow or another, they take Jim's... I think they're Jim's Twitch videos. And uh, and they stick them up there on their channel. And they get... You know, it's got like half a million views already. Um, but I'm sitting here watching it. And I just want to freaking punch my screen. Because his, his advice... Yeah. Makes me cringe. I just. Oh. It's. Uh, his what makes you cringe? His advice on how to build figures. Oh. He seems uh, kind of rambling to me when he does those things. No, like not it's, focused. It's, it irritates. It just irritates me. Because I'm like, you know, Jim's big thing is barrel chests, and he does it because of this, you know, the ribs don't move, so just draw the ribs like this big giant block of freaking wood and stick it in the middle there, and then blah, blah, blah. And he talks about all this stuff. And I don't disagree with everything he says, obviously. Um, but Pretty sure the ribs move. Drives me freaking bananas. Because, you know, hold on, let, let me show you something here. Uh If I can, if I can find a good image, um, here, I, you, I don't know if you're familiar with what a bodybuilder looks like. Yes, I was a bodybuilder. <laughs> but do you see how the, how the, how the ribs, the serratus anterior, the riblets, the, the obliques and the, the stomach muscles, right? Go, go one picture over. Here. Yeah, that's, that's the only guy you need to worry about. <laughs> okay, but let's not even do necessarily body. Okay, here's a weird thing. So, Jim, this is about as close to what Jim's trying to do as I can think of. Because if you look at a Jim Lee drawing. <laughs> Mike examining six packs. I don't know what to say. It, it, just, it just irritates me because he teaches... Or maybe he doesn't. Well, he is teaching it now on YouTube. But everybody copies all these Jim Lee little fanboys, like Eric Minotowski. You know, they copy this. This. Th oh, okay, I'll, I'll yeah. show you. He's teaching it here. Draw this big old chunky, hunky rib cage thing. This translates into this bizarre barrel chest thing, which I grant you, he got it from John Byrne. Um, yeah, I don't think that makes sense actually. And but yeah, and then you look at reality and it's like, okay, th these two, these are muscles up here. This isn't part of some barrel chested. This is the these are the first two, four, six. I know it's kind of an eight, but these kind of all merge together. This, these are the yeah. tattoo of your six pack. <laughs> this is not freaking part of your rib cage it's not wow. one giant block of ribs <laughs> that almost looks like he's just trying to avoid drawing breasts i don't know i don't know I, I, you brought it up and i was just <laughs> already irritated by it before you got here so well you had jimmy reyes on a couple nights ago didn't you i did so he was he was walking through the um, inks he did on David Finch's cover, and mm -hmm. he he was talking about some paper towel method that he learned from Jim Lee. From Jim Lee, this again. yeah, oh yeah, he, Eric does that same freaking thing. I hate it. What does he do? Like smudge the ink with a paper yeah, towel? He just smudges ink with paper towel. It's like a time saving <laughs> technique, and it's like seems like it has the opportunity to do really random stuff. It's just a, I, I, it drives me bananas. B a n a n a s. B. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, thanks for getting my ire up. My <laughs> running, running a little low on blood pressure medicine as it is. If I have a stroke yeah. in the middle of the show, we all know it's your fault. So. Well, did you? Uh, have you read uh, John Burns' X Men thing going on right now? 
his like fan yes. unofficial unofficial deal. Uh huh. It's so bizarre to see like a brand new comic book with eighty style art or whatever era it was from. Yeah, it was the eighties, man. Yeah, I I was talking to uh, Fly Fox the other day, and I I think I think I really hate nineties comics. Yep. It's like not all of them, mind you, but but there's what? there's outliers everywhere, right? Yeah. But like the worst of the nineties was just like. I don't even see it as like representing human beings. It's just like images. It was a flood. There were, there were some great artists doing work in the nineties, obviously. Um, but there was just a flood of trash because there was, there was so much money coming into the market because of the speculation boom that they were bought. They were hiring. They hired me like, <laughs> like, you know, I'd never even freaking, inked a comic book before and my first job was as an anchor uh from how do i do this yeah but yeah that's it I'm like uh, sure i can do that i don't well, have no idea what professionals ink with but here i can i can get some pens at aaron brothers and so you so you got some uh pilot g2s i did not i did <laughs> not even have that but uh, yeah, the whole the whole market was just saturated with garbage artists, garbage art, um, people who you know, give give them give them a few years and they would have been great if they had just kept practicing their craft. But but they landed these gigs because there were so many gigs to land, and uh, and then nobody told them that their art actually sucked. <laughs> Rhaegar wants to kick me for that. Nick C says they hired me, Mike 2020. <laughs> they hired me. That was the inflection. They hired That's me. Funny. Leave my 90s comics alone. We will. Oh. Everyone will because they're worthless. Well, okay. The one that really gets me, and I, I know I'm going to upset some people, but uh, Pitt, Dale Keown. Yeah. That that one just makes me want to break every pen I have in my house. Because it's great? No, because it's awful to look at. What? Like, I'm not sure if that's what it's supposed to be. You're not sure if that's what, what it's supposed to be? Like, what is Pitt? Is he a human being or is he a monster? He's a monster. What kind of monster? A humanoid monster? Of what? Werewolf? Frankenstein? Zombie? Wait, why does it have to fit into a particular category? Like, what is it? What is Chucky? Chucky's a doll. I know, but, you know, it's like... But, like, what is Pit? Pit's Pit. Like, what is it? <laughs> He's Pit. He's Pit Monster. Uh... Did you I can't. Just... I mean, you know what? Honestly, I never read it. I just I just bought it and looked at the pictures. Right. Yeah. Um, because as as amazing as Dale Keown is as a uh, artist, uh, yeah. I don't. Well, I didn't read it, so I couldn't judge the writing. But I know that his storytelling was always his weak point. Yeah. So, but man, there were there were few artists as good as him in the nineties. Yeah, I, I, there is something I appreciate about the art, but like I seriously want to like never look at comics ever again. Uh, I don't know. I, I was more a manga guy, I guess. Anyway, I guess. Yeah. You don't know good from bad. It's okay. My Most people in the '90s didn't. My, my taste has always been questionable. Definitely. Right. You know, one of the first comics I ever owned was a uh, Justice League versus Predator. Oh, really? Yeah. I I want to say that Aaron Lepresti drew that, but I'm not entirely. sure. I'm not sure if I remember that correctly. Hmm. And uh, it was funny because we had to drive like three hours to get it. What? Yeah, because I don't know where I'm at. The comic book shops are all extinct. Oh wait, how long ago was this? Oh, uh, I don't know, like twenty years ago, probably. Oh, you're in Northern California. Yeah. Or Northern-ish. Yeah. Um, wine country. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a ton of comic books in. Uh, well, I guess you'd have to drive for hours. Yeah. 
Oakland, San Francisco, San Jose. All oh, yeah, I don't go to San Francisco for nothing. <laughs> you can yeah, go. I, didn't, I didn't like Pid. I always thought Dragon Ball Z was pretty much the pinnacle of comic books. Yeah, I never got into that. Well, just the way the um, just the way the action moves. Yeah, I never read the manga, so it's it's quite a treat, quite a treat. Yeah, you say that, but your tastes are questionable. <laughs> yes, I have the worst taste. We've already uh, established that. Yeah. But yeah, well. I guess it's good we're not talking about Jim anymore. Yeah, I'm trying to ease you off that. The 90s was good for TMNT and The Crow. I thought The Crow was stupid. You know, it's funny because I was watching a uh, show today uh, on Instagram. It was uh, Carlos Dianda and uh, and Lee Bramejo were having a live chat. And, you know, I've known both of those guys for two decades, whatever. And... Uh, they were talking about Jim and how he would specifically hire people uh, who drew like him. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I almost commented. But. Well, Jim Lee was kind of the, the X-Men guy for a long time, wasn't he? Yeah. Like uh, the cartoons based off of his designs. Uh, the 90s cartoon, yeah. Yeah. Da -na 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 -na. yeah, that one. Yeah, I think I think Jim Lee owes a lot to that, and his name is really easy to say. Yeah, and a lot of people thought he was related to Stan Lee. Right. Well, it's like in the guitar playing world, uh, Jimi Hendrix. Everyone goes to Jimi Hendrix because you know, prolific, had some really good stuff, and if somebody wants to sound like they know what they're talking about. They say Jimi Hendrix, great guitar player. No yeah. one's going to question you on that. Or Eric Clapton, even worse. Where are, you, where are you going with this? It's just, he's like, he's like the good artist, but everyone says it, so it gets boring. Interesting. Whereas you got a guy he like... argue with my neighbor because he, he was like all about the doors. Ugh. And I'm like, have you read Jim Morris's actual lyrics? They are so trite and pedantic and freaking garbage tier poetry. And he would get so mad, dude. He gets. <laughs> I I've only ever heard the radio stuff of the Doors. Fire? Just I don't know, not not my thing. Hmm. Yeah. Opie dog I, says I actually like the Doors, but I used to just make that argument to irritate him. He was, he was such a fanboy of the doors. Let's see, uh, OP Dog says Clapton sucked. Uh, you are correct, sir. Very correct. Eric Clapton is like every white person's favorite guitar player. Uh, I wouldn't know. You can you can drink wine to Eric Clapton. I can drink wine to Metallica. What are you talking about? Yes, you can. Um, <laughs> P Money, Jib Lee, The Doors. Did Mike like anything in the 90s? The Doors was not from the 90s. They were from the 60s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice try, P Money. I think he means the movie. Oh, okay. Yeah, with uh, Val Kilmer. Yeah. Yeah, I like that movie. I love Val Kilmer. Oh, Jeremiah Jones. How are you all wrong about everything tonight? <laughs> what do you mean tonight? <laughs> I'm, I'm. You can't say I'm wrong about this stuff without art making a decent argument. I'm willing yeah. to be convinced that I'm wrong, but you have to convince me with facts. Yes. Doors are crap. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't think they're crap. I think they're they're. It's just. <laughs> It's just that this dude would, would be like, you know, oh, he was on a totally different level and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, dude, listen, the serpent awoke before dawn. And uh, I'm trying to remember the rest of his lyrics. 
Riders on the storm. To this heart, we're born, we're born, and to this world, we're gone. What? Yeah, okay, whatever, dude. It's just like really bad coffee house poetry put to some good funky music and yeah. and sung by a, 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 a sultry voiced, you know, GQ model. That's basically it. Yeah. That's the doors. <laughs> That's the kind of guy that like somebody's mom will tell their daughter about. Like, oh yeah, Jim Morrison. But you know, you know he's even worse than that is is uh, Nirvana. No, I'm gonna disagree with you there. I think I think uh what's his head? Headless headless, what's his face? Um, headless headless <laughs> Kurt Cobain. So <laughs> big. I think I think Kurt Cobain was was like insanely genius. That's why he killed himself. I I, I thought he was dumb as a box of rocks. Uh, like all that stuff you were saying about Morrison's lyrics. Mm-hmm. Like what is Teen Spirit? Uh, uh, an albino, my libido. Yeah, I think he was uh, he was defining the band. He's calling himself the albino. Uh, literally the dumbest music I've ever heard in my life. I would disagree. Yeah. But as we've established, you're wrong about a lot of things. Yes. And if I'm known for hating Nirvana and being wrong about it, let that be my legacy. (laughs) (laughs) Nirvana did kill punk rock, though. Well, they killed the guitar solo. Because, you know, Scorpions, Twisted Sister, Rat, Skid Row. As soon as Nirvana hit, those bands were out of a job. Yeah, but um, Nirvana was Kurt Cobain was a punker. It's just that he was like also an emo. So it's like he took all this punk sensibilities. Like all of his favorite bands were punk bands, and then he like did his weird emo stuff over it and and created that whole sound and then i don't know that's because he wasn't really punk rock punk just kind of disappeared after that but we're bringing it back in australia (laughs) uh i've got my new my new new, i can't do it (laughs) i'm gonna sue he gets all butt hurt if I said what I was thinking. Oh man! <laughs> I I, I got to I'm keeping that dude in my prayers. Apparently, he's been uh, saying some, I I deating some self destructive notions. So I'll oh, keep no. him in my prayers. Do Sounds that. like yeah, that. yeah, definitely. What's his favorite movie? Um, Crocodile Dundee. Uh uh-uh. oh. <laughs> Throw mama from the train. <laughs> oh. 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 I'm going to get an email for that. What's his uh, What's his favorite move in Street Fighter? Uh, I don't know. Sorry, you can... <laughs> <sighs> Which is the uppercut? Terrible. Terrible. Yeah. You know, uh, Chuck Norris was actually in Street Fighter at one point. Really? Yeah, every move was a roundhouse kick. Uh, okay. Jim Lee. No! <laughs> the alternative is Jim Lee Tuck. What's the chat saying while I'm busy teaching them how to ink with a brush? ACDC is the best band. That's correct. I like ACDC. They just got uh, Brian Johnson back too, so congratulations. But Malcolm Young sadly passed away. Well, I don't know who any of those people are. I'm not... ACDC? I know who H- ACDC is. I just I don't pay attention to the people in the band. <laughs> oh, P Money starting up with the Chuck jokes. What's up, Chuck? Yeah, Chuck. Chuck was Chuck was Chuck, man. Chuck definitely deserves a DNQ night. 
We well, uh, I remember Matt did Chuck Norris for uh, Patriotic Superheroes Night. Oh, okay. Maybe maybe he's had his due then. He's had an appearance on d and Yeah. Yeah, I think that's more than enough. That would be a fun chat, though. It would just be endless Chuck Norris jokes. I would draw the Incredible on? Hulk all turning the, uh, into Chuck Norris. All the drama's gone. What do you what do you waste your time on now? Video games? Me? Yeah. Oh, um I don't know. Let's just say the drama's on hiatus until I actually launch a campaign. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I felt really good deleting my Twitter. I don't know what to say. Yeah. I've been off my uh depression meds and uh <laughs> i was like meds, huh? i don't know I, I i just woke up and i'm like i'm gonna delete my twitter a wise choice yeah i mean i still have the i kind of believe account so I'm, I'm gonna try to promote stuff on that account and just whatever but this is, I guess what really got to me was I, I, I searched my name and everything that came up was somebody having something negative to say about me. Mm. And I said, I, I don't remember these people. I don't remember what we're fighting about. And I just don't want people to think about me. Please don't think about me anymore. Yeah, just, yeah. I don't know. I hear you. Why? Maybe I'll maybe I'll reactivate it. I don't know, but it's nice taking a break. Nah, don't bother reactivating it. <laughs> yeah, I might not. Probably for the best. Yeah. Let's see. Andrew Hayes wants to ask you about Mark Silvestri. What about him? What do you think of his artwork? I think his artwork's great. I don't even know who that is. Uh, he was the other hot guy, sort of West Coast style, Jim Lee esque. Yeah, yeah. Mark a lot more um, organic in his work. That's not to say sloppy, but sloppy is part of it. He's just he's just not as as. Uh, as uh, tight about everything. Was he Marvel or DC guy? He was Marvel. He was on, um, what was he on before he left? So I, I want to say X-Men. I think he was on X-Men, yeah. yeah. Or yeah, Uncanny X-Men. I, I think the X-Men suck. Well, they didn't suck in the 80s. When I was a kid, they were great. Yeah. These days, they suck. My shot went through the wall. Like... Night, yep. I don't know. I don't, I don't read. I don't read them. <laughs> so... <laughs> But from what I've seen on YouTube, yep. 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 <laughs> yeah, let's see. Some people are with you, Mike. I said, don't reactivate Twitter. Let's see. 90s grunge. Zeus came up. Deleting Twitter, never having one is the path to a good life. Yeah. Well, you know, even when I tried to go positive and productive on Twitter, it was still, still just, you'll never get away from the negativity there. Yeah, whereas uh, in, in opposite world, I just unblocked a bunch of people on Twitter. <laughs> Even Liam? Um, let's, let's not get out of hand. <laughs> let's not get ridiculous here. Yeah. Sylvester Pencil Larry Hamo scripted Wolverine. I don't like Larry Hama simply because of the stories that I heard from Brian Shearer. Yeah, and his politics are terrible. That too. I, I'll, I'll just say something else that people will hate me for. If you're a veteran and you're voting for Biden, well, if you're voting for Biden, period, I feel sorry for you. You can pull the Biden thing and say, "If you're a veteran, you ain't you ain't voting for Trump." 
you ain't a veteran. Well, look at that. Look at that <laughs> clip that look at that clip that went around when he muttered under his breath. What? A stupid beard. That wasn't even under his breath. That was full throated. Yeah. Oh, you stupid, you know. Bastards, yeah. And then he yeah. then he said, Yeah, y'all, what is it? Y'all slow around here. Yeah. yeah. That's his honest freaking appraisal of the military because he's a douchebag. I would have I would have look, immediately looked to my left and say, What the <laughs> are you hearing this? <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> Jeff Potts, 3 a.m. Going to bed. Good night, Jeff Potts. Good night, Mr. Potts. Good night. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, Ray Thulu says, only way to avoid trash Twitter is to not follow anyone. So your timeline gets no posts or reposts in your face. That's true. At that point, why are you on Twitter? Yeah. Jeremiah Jones says, Twitter's fine. Just don't engage with the trash. See, I, I tried that, and I still found arguments. And uh, I think it... You run into a jerk in the morning, you run into a jerk. You run into a jerk in the afternoon and the evening, it's possible that you were the jerk. Oh, I'm just going to go ahead and say Twitter makes jerks of us all. Yeah, there's no buffer. I had a tweet go viral today and I forgot to put MAGA7 on it. Which tweet? It was uh, uh, Jack uh, Posobiec. He tweeted uh, this picture, this gif of uh, what? what's her face? Kamala. Uh, Kamala Harris. Kamala. Saying, <laughs> Joe uh, Cool. Saying, I'm speaking <laughs> with that oh, smile. Oh, I think I saw that. Yeah. yeah, and then I retweeted and I said, I'm it's condescending. And it went completely freaking viral like 130 something thousand impressions and all these retweets and all the and I'm, I'm like i forgot to freaking put mega seven on that one i try to put it on almost everything and like the one that goes viral it's like, <laughs> no. they're making a big deal about this fly that landed on pence's head uh, i think that fly landed on pence's head to show the hypocrisy of the left and possibly the hypocrisy of the right, because I remember all those those gifts or those things of uh, the flies on Hillary and on on Obama and the the you know oh they're the antichrist crap and all that stuff and it's like it's a fly dude <laughs> like like that's supposed to be some kind of noteworthy anything when it came to that debate like yes a fly landed on. The vice president. It's true. It did. I saw somebody made a TikTok where they uh, had this 3D fly start doing the uh, skateboard thing to the Fleetwood Mac song. Skateboard thing. Yeah, you seen the viral thing about the guy on the skateboard? No. He's uh he's just skating down the highway. And he's listening to Fleetwood Mac, and he's drinking cranberry juice. That sounds familiar. Why is it sad that that sounds familiar? Oh, it's been viral. I know, but you describing that and it being viral is why it's sad. Yeah. Well, the guy's car broke down. He's trying to get to work, and he's just grooving. I don't know. I guess it was just nice and chill. The whole world got to chill out for a second. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Ocean Spray donated a truck to him. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Somebody donated him 20000 bucks, and he bought his mom and dad a car. You go ahead and uh, he has an agent now. An agent? Yeah. <laughs> to what end? I, I don't know. I, I, I greatly look forward to his success, I guess. Yes. So. Yeah. I feel like you need to wash this brush out. Yeah, the OP dog, the dreams was the song. When, when, when you have so guys, got any inking questions? 
Yes. yes. Much. So when I've been inking, I uh, I just try to do like a big old blop. What? But I don't know how to get like the pullaways. You do a big blop. Yeah. Big old blop ink. What are you, what are you inking with? Uh, G pen. Well, there's your first problem. <laughs> well, I tried. Um, I remember that you in Clip Studio you made your brush tip in there. I don't use Clip Studio. What do you use? Photoshop. Oh, okay. Well, you kind of have like a triangle brush tip, don't you? Yeah, slightly triangular. Yeah, kind of like oblong triangular. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I did that for the brush tip. And uh, it seems to be good for control and stuff, but I just don't know how to get like pullaways involved. Uh, pressure? Pen pressure? Pressure. I, I don't know if it's just my hands not being developed enough, but I can never get the line straight either. Uh, I'd, I'd, I'd have to show you. I'm not making any sense. Yeah. It's practice, practice, practice with thinking. Yeah. And being uh, confident in where your line's going to go. Well, the thing I want to do is, um, for any inking I do, I want to make sure that I could do it with one tool. Uh -huh. Go on. Because a buddy of mine showed me that I should do some like gray tones. Uh huh. Basically, like do inking with black and then do inking with gray. And I don't like how that looks. Wait, you can Uber charge while you have your sock? Well, I ink with black. <laughs> That's all you use, right? That's all I use. And with just that pen you have in your hand right there. Well, I use this. I use a quill. I use markers, depending on what's called for. Well, okay. Say so you got like a big, big space of black. You go to another pen. Uh, yeah, I have a slightly larger brush, so I'll use that for. And you use speedball ink? No. <laughs> Jim Lee speed speedball ink. Ugh. <laughs> I'm not gonna bite you hard anymore. What? <laughs> You're just here to frustrate me. Yes. Yeah, we gotta get this Watch this. It is hot in here again. Maybe I should turn the fan on. Yeah, turn the fan on. Hold on. Speedball. I, also, I, should, I should have my glasses on. Cause... Mm, G nip fountain pen. Fountain dip pens are what I use to ink my art, says Cameron Childress. That's a new name around here. Mm -hmm. G nip. I don't even know what a G nip is. Isaac, my guys, can you be a little more quiet? So Rhaegar is talking about my octopus teacher. You heard of that? No. Uh, guy falls in love with an octopus. Nope. Don't want to know about it. <laughs> oh, is that the guy that got his nuts chopped off? That's correct. Yeah. Genius. <laughs> He's going to show up at the pearly gates with no junk, and God's going to be like, it's in the book. <laughs> uh, He's going to tell us. Shout not. You know why it's in the book? This is why it's in the book. <laughs> Saint Saint Peter's gonna be like, oh, hi, hang on. Yeah, he, yeah, he's here. And then you know, God comes down there and says, no, no, I'll, I'll get this one, Peter. Thank you. 
<laughs> you and I have to have to talk, son. <laughs> what about an octopus? Did you fall in love with? <laughs> Let me explain a thing or two to you, boy. <laughs> That's the version of God that comes to see that guy. <laughs> what, what we have here is what in the wide world communicate. <laughs> what about an octopus did you find attractive? <laughs> yeah, I mean, how can you look at the female form and be like No, I'd rather have an octopus. <laughs> Octopus D and Q. I'm going with the octopus. <laughs> they have beaks. The only they have beaks. That's true. <gasps> they have burning rings of fire. <laughs> 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 oh, Cameron. Cameron. <laughs> oh, Cameron says he's new. He's found us from Quinn's ideas. Right on. Oh, thank you. Did you, uh, Cameron? Did you happen to back Tadia? Out of curiosity. And if you did, are you considering backing other books? One of which you have the... Or do you uh, already buy comic books? That's, that's a, another good question. Yeah. Tell us about your comic book background. People want tentacles. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he was probably a connoisseur of the uh, the Japanese. Ah, uh, yes. The, see, I hate Cecil's asking what this book is for. This is a secret project. Stay secret tuned project. for the announcement. Yes, yes. yes, the announcement will come shortly. That's not a joke about my height. What'd you think of Fly Fox's uh, draw along last night? Which one did he do? <laughs> so strange that uh, so small a thing. It's caused Wait, us so much trouble. Wait, what? Boromir. Oh, that was his. <laughs> <laughs> that was really good. I'm not talking to Fly Fox for a while. Yeah, don't blame you. <laughs> mailing list soon? Yes. Yes, mailing list soon. I've actually already made that page, um, but I'm waiting for him to. Uh, we got to do the announcement for the page to launch. So, yes, yes, yes. Rhaegar Targaryen says the announcement will come midgetly. See, I hate Cecil. Uh, this will be, I'm fairly certain, the largest project. Uh, of all time. Well, that I've worked on for sure. But then again, how many have I worked on? Um, 17. Seems like it sometimes. Huh? Yeah. Did you happen to catch uh, Dan Shahan's show the other night? I did not. He had a uh, Froggy on. That's probably why I didn't bother catching. <laughs> It was uh, it was an interesting conversation. Yeah, I saw some people talking about it on uh, the yeah. farming channel. But, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't care enough to read any of that stuff. See, Andrew Hayes wants me to uh, talk about Greg Capullo's art style. I think Greg Capullo was the Spawn guy for a while, wasn't he? He was. That's when Spawn got good. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not a big fan of Spawn, but uh, I I like Todd McFarlane's art, and uh, yeah, I, I like it. Too. Yeah, but Greg Capullo, I, I don't think I could think of anything he's drawn, but uh, certainly would like to. He took over Spawn pretty what? early. I shot him. Yeah. That dip pen Mike is using is what I use. I might be calling it the wrong name. This is actually a zebra mapping pen from Japan. From a Nippon. Yeah. I know. You... I, I switched to a quill without even thinking about it. Because I'm supposed to be doing this with a brush for 
all y'all's benefit. <laughs> so that has the ink in the pen then. No, no, this is for this. It's a nib. Is it's it metal? It's a, it is metal. That's what I want. It is a uh, tungsten carbide metal. No, it's um. What do you call it? Uh, tempered, tempered steel. Does it have any give to it? Yeah, a little bit. That's what I'm looking for. Well, there you go. He's done a fair bit of Batman too, huh? Who, Capullo? Yeah. Uh, I guess. Hmm. Cameron says McFarland is a hack and sellout. I like this man. Give him a reward. Uh, Cameron, if you're an artist yourself, uh, join us for Drawn and Quartered. We usually post the draw along thread. Show us your artwork. And uh, if you're good, you can uh, fight for a spot on the show through the fan edition over on Chester Bubsby's channel. But uh, Some of the guys that come up through the ranks, such as Weldon, are inundated with uh, comic book work. Yeah, Jimmy Reyes showed up last night wanted to hire him. Yeah, I had to, I had to wave him off. <laughs> it's easy, easy there, Jimmy. Yeah. yeah. Cool your jets. Right now. Yeah. Uh, what would you think of his uh, Dragon Rage campaign? Uh, looks good. Looks good. Uh, yeah. I, I think I, I was explaining to him that there's a, uh, there's a difference between this market and and the general comics market, it's like a whole new market that you have to kind of, you know, find your way into or, 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 you know, find these new fans. Um, cause you know, you have a Dave Finch cover. If that was like, if you were selling to the comic book market, the regular comic book market, and you had a Dave Finch cover, people would buy the Dave Finch cover. Because they'd know that Dave Finch has fans in comic book stores and they would buy, you know, I don't know, a few copies each store just, just to just to appease those fans. But this isn't that market. So it's uh it, there's a learning curve. We're all we're all learning it. Yeah, it's changing and adapting too. Yeah, yeah. No, I like his long term uh goals too it's not all about him you know it's about it's about the page one comics yeah well that was that was one of the things i got frustrated with looking at his campaign uh, i ended up backing it i got right. the finch cover but he had like four different perks that were t-shirt cap uh i don't know this tchotchke stuff i just don't want any of it i just want a comic book yeah well just, he's learning it yeah, it's like okay. Here's here's a David Finch cover. Here's a here's a baseball cap. Here's a T-shirt. Here's a mug or something. Then oh, and here's a, a cover by this other guy. It's just like, what are you selling, brother? Yeah, there's other campaigns that do all that. Yeah, I just Is oh, uh, Ca Cameron Children says I do dabble in comic art, traditional. Could you repeat where I should submit my art? Well, you could uh, every Wednesday night, drawn and quartered, we do a draw long thread. Uh, feel free to submit your artwork on Twitter, or you can join us on the Blacklist Universe Discord, where there's a couple different rooms you can go to. It's a fun page. This is a fun no. page. I'll tell you what. Hold on a second. I gotta check a message. Well, you fell when you were pushing. Nope. Yeah. Sweet. All right. One of my big pro guys said he will have uh, he will have the cover this week. There you go. Yes. Can you push it? Why not? Just push it. My other one that was like, yeah, I'm going to, but my mother in law's in the hospital right now, and oh my like, oh. All right. <laughs> Well, if you need something to do while you're waiting there, yeah, <laughs> you can draw. <laughs> it's like I'm in the hot, I'm in the parking lot. I'm like, bring your drafting table. I'm just kidding. 
Do just it on purpose. Kidding. Just kidding. I wouldn't do that. Yeah. Let's see here. Fine. Thanks Fine. for everyone for being so welcoming in the stream. I feel right at home. Well, thank you, Cameron. A lot of good you stuff going are on here. Home, Cameron. Yeah. There is uh, a lot of good people in this community. Take whatever you want out of the fridge. Yeah. Don't drink any of the light beer. Uh, yeah. How many covers are for this book? It says I hate Cecil. Uh, we're doing three on this campaign. There you go. Oh, you're not doing one? Oh, I'm talking about this book. The Secret Project. Yeah, Secret Project you're not doing a cover for? I did two. Oh, okay. I did two and, uh, and, um, Kana did one. Yeah. Oh, Kane. No, I was talking, the covers I was talking about were for Lone Star 3. Lone Star. The, that's uh, Lone Star Mom. Uh, Motum. 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 Yes. 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 Uh, yeah, I think if I do do another Twitter, it might be a uh, it's just a fan page for Mike Oxmall. <laughs> Mike Oxmall. Mike Oxmall. But, uh, you know, Mike Oxmall didn't uh, have a Twitter when he made his first appearance. There you go. Oxmall needs a Twitter, man. Yeah, that, that might be what happens. At least the fan page. Oh, you know, since, page for him, like, yeah, since we don't know his real identity, his fans can, yeah, he hasn't made an appearance anywhere lately, has he? No, I, I don't think Oz is doing a show anymore, is he? Yeah, he is. Really, I was on it a couple weeks ago. Really, yeah, yeah. I like how he just sets up shop and people come and make content for him. I know. <laughs> I'll uh, I'll be in the bathroom for the next two hours. Yeah. Feel free yeah. to uh, say whatever you want on my show. Yeah. No, oh, oh, Liam. Uh, Odie went to the army. So what? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess uh, Greece has a compulsory military service period. Oh. So I think he'll be there for like nine months or something like that. Yeah. Well, he's so, going to draw my book. Well, their plan, uh, it was rumored, was uh, if he made enough money, Odie wouldn't have had to go. But he made lots of money. Not enough, I'm afraid. I feel like I don't want to do this with a brush. So what is this guy? What is this guy doing? I've been looking at this for like an hour now. This guy's like uh, just charging past the battle. He's charging into it. Oh. He's actually yeah. in control of these other guys. So storytelling. What is the story you're telling at this panel? That he's going. All right. So he says in this panel. He's like, that dude's bad. I'm going to kill him. And then to these guys, he says, you get the big guy. I'll get the little guy. And he, he says, yes, Captain, what's her name? What's his name? And then, oh, Captain, what's his name? No. And then he says, yes. Now, their story. Not telling, actual but dialogue, by the way. <laughs> right. So there's storytelling, but one of the things I heard you mention before, too, is leading the eye. Leading the eye. Well, the, the story goes this way, right? You read left to right. Right. So you start here, go here, leads back, and then it's going to read left to right here. All right. And then left to right here. I don't do a lot of page design. I know some people do, but. 
as long as the storytelling reads left to right, panel to panel, and you don't have some confusing thing where you get to the end here and then you don't know where to go. Right? A lot of a lot of a lot of bad mistakes are like a uh, small panel up here and then big panel here and then small panel here because the the, the natural incl inclination is to go right left uh, or left right left right but if you're left right left right you're going back to this panel so your mind kind of wants to go left down right but that's not a natural storytelling in 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 western culture Right. right. So if you can have a large panel on this side and then go left, right, and then down, and that's a natural progression. And then left, right, down, left, right, down, left, right. But doing like a figure eight is what you're trying to avoid. What? A figure eight wouldn't work at all. You can't, you can't read it. Yeah. So that sounds like somebody who may not be, uh, experience just trying to like oh i'm gonna avoid doing something do a four panel thing like college of the dead and um you know trying to be too fancy perhaps um i don't know i think what college of the dead was going for was a movie pitch book yeah. not a comic book right um i believe I think Mark Miller did that with a project years ago. Um, but that's kind of, that's, that's how storyboards look. You have three panels on a page, you know, they're horizontal because that's the, the size of your movie screen and you just give all the action off that way. Uh, so I, yeah, college of the dead was just a movie pitch book trying to pass itself off as a comic book. Right. Just it's kind of like, you know, past twenty pages. It seemed like that would get really boring visually. Well, like I said, that's how they storyboard movies. Yeah. So if his whole concept is, hey, I'm gonna get this, I'm gonna get the script, uh, you know, sold by having a comic book of the of the script, uh, which basically just reads completely. It reads as a book, but it has all the dialogue and everything from the script, but it's a storyboard. So, yeah, I mean, it, it, that was just plain as day what he was doing when I looked at it. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense, actually. He even left room for notes. <laughs> that might be the most damning piece of evidence there. Yeah, I know. But you know what? Whatever. Um, director or or producer gets a copy of that as a pitch book they're probably going to be like oh good it's got room for notes <laughs> <laughs> oh yes let's let's do a zombie movie yeah so i don't know I, I you know i have nothing personal against adam post um that's that's a business decision so yeah that sounds like he's found an audience well good yeah I applaud anyone uh, their success. So this is America, man. Go go fulfill your dreams. Yeah, sell those hot dogs. Don't be a jerk about it. And try to destroy other people in the process. That's where uh, that's where the rubber meets the road. Yeah, I think I think that's been a turning point for me too. Is my YouTube was kind of a <laughs> you know the place of a critic, but uh, I don't want to criticize somebody's book without also helping sell it i guess yeah well criticism isn't or or rather shouldn't be that's just insulting there's a difference between being a critic and just being a you know <coughs> insult comedy dog uh like when i do the critique show on my channel on saturday nights anyone who wants to come by and watch that cameron uh, childress um you know I'm there to help people get better at their craft. That's the purpose. And yeah, not, you know, not like, um, I'm kind of a natural critic. So that's kind of a niche I could probably fill in this marketplace. 
if, if I continue to have people who are willing to sacrifice their ego on the altar of my show. Well, that I'm was not doing it just to be a jerk. Yeah. Well, it's too bad you couldn't do it like on a wider scale too. Cause I think I suggested this to you once, but, um, you had some reservations about it. When I first started watching your boy, Zach, uh, the first video I ever saw from him, he took a Captain Marvel comic and he took like a Sharpie or something and he redrew over it. And he said, this is what's wrong with the art here. You know, this is the cover. It's supposed to be more dynamic. There's all this empty space. And to me, that was really interesting. I thought that's what I was getting into with you boy, Zach. Just like there's problems in comics and this is part of it. So yeah, I thought I'm, it would be. I'm, I'm, it's just a thing with me. I'm, I don't critique people who, who don't ask for it. Don't ask for it. Right. Because they don't want to know. Yeah. And that, that's kind of like a, a, a etiquette, right? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. Plus professional to professional. It's like, I can, I can complain about Jim Lee because actually I shouldn't, (laughs) but I do. Um, But you know, it's Jim. It's like, he's freaking one of the richest guys in the industry. He doesn't care. He's not going to listen to my critique anyways. And uh, whatever. Um, But you still want people to support Jim Lee's projects. Yeah, I can't stop people from support Jimmy supporting Jim's yeah. stuff. He's got more fans than I'll ever have, so right. Um I just want to explain to his fans why they're wrong. No, just kidding. <laughs> well, Fuzzy Creature has an interesting thought here. He says fostering artists is Mark Mike's long term play because he wants to build a small empire in the next 10, 15 years. <laughs> well, true. between uh, you know, Matt Weldon and Siege and Matt Cawson, you know, let's that's a pretty sound theory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've got uh, I've got people that I can tap, you know, for uh, for projects as they come around. Yeah, well, and you have to shoot people away from Weldon now. I know, right? Yeah. And I'm learning from Weldon as well. You know, like I said, I did, I laid this page out Weldon style. So. Oh yeah, that was interesting. I didn't really catch that. What do you mean? Uh, can you uh, re-explain it in a nutshell? Um, yeah, you you see how I generally tell people to build their figures, right? Yeah. How I tell them, you know, you start you your spine and your head and your shoulders and your you're blocking everything in and all of that stuff. Well, with with Weldon's. Um, <laughs> Where did I put it? Uh, with Weldon, he just he just puts pencil to paper and starts drawing full figures, right? Yeah. And so that's what I did on this one. I just I just went in. Um, there, that's all the lines that I had on that paper. I just started scribbling in the shapes of the characters. And I thought, wow, that really, it really loosens up um, the figure work. So I like it. So when people pick this book up, do you think when they get to this page, they'll notice, they'll notice it, that you did it differently? I don't know. Some people might. (laughs) I will. Ray Thulu. We can get Kane and White into some good work. Kane and White. <laughs> I, I don't know why Kane and White's not blown up yet. When uh, I when people bring up Jim Lee, I just want to be like, no, 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 check out Kane and White. <laughs> I I it's there's there's a lot of good artists out there that just don't have the have the um, what do you call it? The promotion or the uh, exposure. It's funny. It's like oh, don't take jobs for exposure. I mean that's true. You shouldn't. You should take jobs for money. But 
a job. I, I'm doing this job for exposure. Uh, granted, I'm getting paid for this job, but <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm putting aside Lone Star to do this job for the exposure that working with somebody with a million subs is going to grant my my work and my channel and all that stuff. So, I mean, there's such a thing as 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 being practical about what projects you take if there's a longer term goal than just paying your mortgage. Which for me is this is the long term goal is building up building up a fan base so that that's large enough that uh, I don't have to ever think or contemplate uh, having to try to to rebuild a fan base in a fan base that has been completely poisoned against me. I don't want to get into it, but you know what I mean? I do. Uh, uh, uh. Kanan uh. and are doing a book with Dame Drops, the food reviewer, since their brand two book is flopping. And I think that's a freaking great idea. Dame uh, Drops? Yeah. Um, I know that guy from his from his five guys food critique. Damn, <laughs> damn, damn. That guy. Yep, that's the dude. <laughs> who would, okay, this is going to be the most negative thing I say tonight. Who would want a comic book from that guy? I don't know. He's a food reviewer. Why would I want a food review comic book? Because he's an influencer. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I, I wish Kate no, had all the dude, success. That's what I'm saying. Influencer, that's that is the exposure. If he can get paid to do a book that'll grant him the exposure of a new audience. I don't know how many guys I, he's got millions of subs, right? So he's got millions of people watching his shows. Some percentage of them are gonna be, you know, Dragon Ball Z fans who just happen to like five guys. <laughs> right there is crossover all of us we're not all just one thing or another uh, you know so i think that's i think it is it an experiment yes well how many subs does damon drops have i don't know go look it up <sighs> chat if you would help us 1.3 million subs okay see all right. If he well, can get if he can get half a percent of those people interested in a comic book, that's a huge book. I one hope half, so. One half of one percent is uh, it's what five thousand? Wait, how many? One point three? Yeah. Uh, do you guys like Lee Bermejo's art? He blew up out of nowhere in the last three years. His art makes me want to give up art. Lee didn't blow up out of nowhere. Lee has been a while. I've known Lee for a quarter century. Uh, <laughs> I just saw him today on that Carlos Dianda stream. But Lee has, uh, I mean, he did the, uh, the I think, the Brian Azzarello Joker book that, that designed, he designed the Joker that... Um, that Heath Ledger ended up copying for for his the movie with the scars and all that stuff. Oh and the yeah, trench coat and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so Lee's kind of, I mean, he's got his place in his history, but he's he was a you know pretty decent sized guy at Wildstorm, um, and then he went on to the to work at DC and doing some pretty high profile stuff. I think then he, he I think he moved to. Is it Spain? I think he moved to Spain. Um, and then started also working on some books in uh, in the European market, if, if I'm not mistaken. I could be mistaken on that. But no, it's not out of nowhere, man. He's been around. Mm. I'm not familiar with him. I like to go check that out. You don't know anybody. No, I just know Jim Lee. Uh. <laughs> And Kane and White, apparently. Yeah, Lee's work is fantastic. I didn't even hear about this uh, hamburger comic book. I should. Uh... I don't. I don't know what it is they're doing. I just know the guy that they're working with. So. Well, it kind of looked like Brand because 
I guess it had like the guy turning into like a bigger version of himself. What? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my dang. Yeah. Uh, really? A, we're doing meme comic books now? <laughs> Bro, if PewDiePie freaking called me up and said, Mike, I want you to do a book about nine year old superheroes, I'm going to promote it on my channel. I would drop everything. Yeah. Well, that would be a good book, though. <laughs> Whatever. That's, that's the point. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, Pootie, Pootie Pie is... That's a funny guy. Pootie Pie. Pootie Pie. Sorry, boy. I want you to do the comic book Lawai. <gasps> yeah, right. <laughs> just, do a, just do like a three-panel strip every day for him. You know, it'd be fun after this. Uh, I really want to see what D and Q uh, and Friday nights could look like after this project launches. Get some new I blood do. in here. Yeah. Get a new audience, some fresh blood. Oh, Jiminy Cricket! Jiminy Cricket! He wants to call the comic cuties Pootie Pie. Cutie Pie. Yeah, uh, referencing the Netflix uh, film that's being sued by Texas. Yeah, I hope that actually goes through. I doubt it will, but that'd be great. Batman Noel. Is that what Bermeo did? Uh, what's it called? No what? Ba Batman Noel. Is there the Joker on the cover? I don't know. It was a secret costume in uh, one of the Arkham games, I think. Hmm. Oh, speaking of which, I sold my PlayStation today. Oh, uh, the new one? Well, no, I, I got the new one coming. I got the pre-order still, but I had my PS4 sitting here, and I was like, well, I don't need this anymore. I got 250 bucks for it. Wow. <laughs> I was like, GameStop offered me like $140. I'm like, yeah, I'll just go to Craigslist, thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I got half of my PS5 paid off. <laughs> And it's and all backwards compatible, apparently. So, and now you have nothing. Yep. Well, I got my computer still. So, I got an Xbox One that I'm not going to use. It's a better console. Yeah. So it's a One X. So if anyone wants to uh, buy that for me, you give me money. Uh, Type confirmed in the chat. <laughs> Well, you know, we, we do so much fun stuff here on your channel, you know, with the drawing quarter and the Friday night auctions and the bullpen, you know, getting, you know, let's say you get like a thousand subscribers from this guy in the project. That would do wonders for the channel. So much right. more fun stuff going on. Right. And he says that uh, <laughs> he's like, he's like, usually if I mention another video. Like just mention a video in one of his videos, they usually get thirty thousand views. What? What? Well, for example, what? Did, what kind of views did you get um, for your last video here? Which video? Uh, any of them. I don't know. I get four or five hundred views. So thirty four to five hundred versus three thousand. That'd be no 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 000. 30 000. Yeah, thirty. Three ought. Cameron says that grass looks real good. Oh, you should see you should see him draw a wicker chair. <laughs> <laughs> or uh, or a motorcycle. Chairs. Or a motorcycle uh, flying through a window. Hey, you know, tempered glass, you got to you got to draw it right. Yep. Drawing grasses. Yeah, the grass is actually at a it's sort of an fisheye perspective so yeah. okay. mm. tiny bubbles interesting that narrows down the possibilities of people Gross. well not really there's a ton of people on YouTube with over a million views Unfortunately, uh, uh, a million subs unfortunately I'm not one of them not yet but, you know, that's what I was I was looking at uh, like I said before, that's why I ended up seeing that Jim Lee thing. Um, 
a lot of these just how to draw channels get millions and millions of subs for you know just taking the time to do well done entertaining tutorial um style uh how to draw videos and i'm like i just need to be able to have the time to do that maybe you know once a week or something um and do a real concerted effort to actually build this channel up with positive wholesome valuable content not uh the other stuff yeah you know you know it'd be nice if somebody went and did a loomis video because the one that always comes up first now has got like at least two minutes of boring talk before he gets to any kind of drawing oh for loomis yeah for a loomis head it's 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 terrible it's like a minute of the guy talking about oh i'm doing this again you should see my last video if i'm going too fast go back to the old video it's like i just want to learn the loomis head i don't, I don't know to, i don't need to hear from proco about another video i'm not going to go find that when i already got my pencil in my hand <laughs> Fuzzy Creature said Mike almost cost V his channel. That's true. Who's V? Uh, v is, uh, he's from, he's from Romania. He's a, uh, you know, kind of a pop culture. Uh, he does a lot of talking about the pop culture stuff in Romania. And he's, he used to be a doctor. But, you know, he only gets paid like uh, $250 in uh, Romanian uh, as a doctor. So I quit doing... Uh, I quit being a doctor to uh, build my YouTube channel. Is that the guy that puts stuff in a hydraulic press? No. Oh, okay. Sounds just like no. Him. He does. He does. Uh, he does pop culture stuff a lot. And he uh, came on your channel. Yeah, but I went on his channel one time, and Jojo, Jojo shows up, <laughs> walking into the room naked. <laughs> holding it a diaper up because he needed me to change his diaper Ugh. and he's like okay got to take the stream down sorry everybody got to go <laughs> <laughs> and it was like a three hour long stream too we were like i'm like oh man this was so good he, i was on there with an ex-muslim dude who lived oh. in germany and oh man it was it was a great stream and jojo ruined it Jojo's bizarre. Oh, not that with that. I'm uh, in this no way. Uh, I'm not taking any chances. I'm taking that down right now. <laughs> Delete. Delete. Uh, yes, Lone Star was promoted by Ben Shapiro at one point. So Indeed. that's your that's your Indeed. key to get to PewDiePie. 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 He loves Ben Shapiro. Actually, actually, um, Ian Miles Strong knows Pewdie. PewDiePie. Does he? Ian? Miles Strong? No, oh, yeah. JoJo shows no mercy. I know, right? Whipping JoJo, man. Trying to take down the man. JoJo. <laughs> it, was, it, was a, it was a cuties moment for mm. these streams. Just kidding. <laughs> Zawa Rudo. Uh, I think that's a bizarre adventure reference. 100 episodes, man. Um, no, this was like three or four years ago. No, it wasn't. It was like, uh, it's like two years ago. Two years. Two Nick years C ago. says that. AT&T is laying off most of Warner Media, including all of DC Comics? Nah. Nick C, what are you... Is this new? I have not heard anything about... Well, I always hear layoffs. Yeah, I heard about layoffs, but all of DC Comics, somehow that just doesn't jibe as true. I like calling them dumb comics. Dumb, dumb. Yeah, dumb, dumb. dumb comics. I like their comics. I just think they're kind of dumb. Well, SpongeBob is dumb, but it's very enjoyable. That's true. 
Deadline Article Leak, DC Comics Publishing. Does this just come out, Nick C? Yeah, how old is this article? Yeah, are we talking hours or minutes here? Like, is this is this the bell tolling? Is this going to wake up Frogman for a stream? Him and him and his uh, court jester. Got to roll out of bed and pull on his Spanx and his feather boa. <laughs> there was one post on there. It was something like, who's this Chris guy? Some internet weirdo? And they had him in the Elton John get up. <laughs> Just completely oblivious. Chris. Oh, Chris Chan. Let's see. Nick C says Clownfish TV posted a video. Jeremy I Peterson. Saw the Clownfish one, but it's it, they didn't say that uh, they're firing everybody. Mm. I watched that earlier today. Just speculation, I guess. Well, there'll always be Batman stories to tell. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Yeah, Batman's okay. Go, 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 go. All right. It's live. Live. What are we drinking today, ladies and gentlemen? Mm-mm-mm. Jeremy Peterson, August articles from August, but nothing recent. Okay, interesting. I think that there's a bit of speculation going on. Super fragicalodicious thing. So, what do you think for uh, episode one hundred and one? Um. Okay, I think in mind. Somebody had an idea. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> For a team of superheroes. Um, there once was an idea. How is my hand not cramping yet? I can't hold a pen for that long. Um, I don't hold it very tight. Years of practice, boys. Maybe that too. Yeah, but I don't. You ever go to like tight. a massage therapist for your hands? No. That sounds just, weird. Just get a hand massage. You mean a yeah. no. nope, 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 nope. Rush. Oh yeah, the boys is out now. Final episode. Oh really? Yeah, should be. Ooh. The last episode was mind blowing. <laughs> mind blowing. I trying to remember what happened on the last episode. Uh, a bunch of people had their. Oh yeah! Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They did the. Uh... Kingsman ending. Is that oh, okay? I haven't seen Kingsman, but yeah, I think we're. I'm smelling what you're stepping in. Yeah, Kingsman was good. Yeah, I never saw it. I don't like British people. <laughs> you're such a bigot. No, no, I just, Aww. I just never forgot 1776. Oh Sorry, God. the rest of you did. Those people were dead. <laughs> Came out a few hours ago. Okay, so Nick C says. Warner Media is eyeing a 27% reduction. Okay, it sounds like a clownfish video. Yeah, yeah it's this a clickbait video. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Yeah, they're not going to close DC. Although, that'd be interesting if they did. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. You know, I I think the boys being weekly is good, but I don't know. I kind of lost interest along the way. Okay. Yeah, you can't hold it too too firm, man. That's a that's a rookie mistake. It really is. You don't get as much control either if you're holding it too hard. Yeah, and you feel all weird. It sounds uh, 
sort of oxymoronic that you get less control, but you need to have some level of nuance there in your grippage. Yeah. We're in the midst of that process and will involve increased investments in priority areas. Yeah, see, that's that just sounds like regular PR talk, mate. <laughs> you know, there's some well, people you, are going to get laid off. I just, yeah. I'm not going to lay off an entire, you know. Yeah, but, you know, Clownfish can get up there with that press release. And... No, I'm telling you, I watched his video. He didn't say it. <laughs> Was it a clickbait title then? Um, Probably. Yeah. It's part of the business. Clicking the baits. I mean, that's that's how you get views on YouTube, I think. You know? Yeah. You got to read between the lines of these press releases, see what you can dig out of it, see what the truth is there. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. Are you ready to go to bed now? No, 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 no. I just remembered I got to take my medication. Are those your crazy pills? I'm not crazy pills. Have you taken your crazy pills? I don't like British people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, said that. <laughs> I don't yeah. like Brits and I cannot lie. The other brothers can't then lie. When you have some tea and crumpets. Hey. I've always wanted to go to England and like get kicked out of a bar. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think Clownfish is pretty fair reporting. I think they really see themselves as kind of like journalistic effort. Yeah. The guy from Red Bank says he might unsub from Geeks and Gamers, although he likes some of the guys in Geeks and Gamers. Um I just, I'm not, yeah, I like those guys too. I'm just, I'm not into the, maybe I've just stopped caring about all that stuff. I certainly That's have. probably it. I just don't care. If I never have to hear about Star Wars Episode Eight, whatever it was, all the better. Yeah. The, the most talked about movie of all time. It's got to be a record. For no good reason. It, it wasn't. It wasn't that bad, and it wasn't that good. Just a bunch of people seeing that there was a, a gold mine and complaining about it. I hate Cecil says I'm the type of guy to start a bar fight. Um, I'm definitely part of the mixture. You all be nice. <laughs> Definitely part of the mixture. I love a good fight. Uh, yeah, it's been three years of talking about the Last Jedi. It's it's a mental illness at this point. I don't think anybody even talks about it anymore, do they? Uh, you know, the I saw it's such a boring subject. I saw a tweet from one of the geeks and gamers, and it was just a fan of theirs, and he said, "Don't worry, Anna." I don't care if the guy said this. I'm not buying that Star Wars flying game. Don't worry. Like, is that is that where we're at now? That Star Wars girl is encouraging people to not buy a Star Wars game. I don't know. I don't. I honestly don't watch much of Anna's content either. Yeah, just that's a strange place to be for somebody calling themselves that Star Wars anything. Yeah, it's. Well, and, I don't know. Until the next, uh, the next stuff comes out, and if it's good, I don't know. Yeah, it's just they've kind of they've they've kind of made a lot of people stop caring about something a lot of people have been fans of for decades. I I couldn't agree with you more. Uh, I, I think that's everything I've ever tried to say about geeks and gamers. What you just said right there. Just, yeah. And that Star Wars, uh, I think it's called Squadrons. That looks really fun, actually. It's really good. Yeah, I just can't bring myself to care about Star Wars anymore. Yeah. Well, they're upset because uh, 
they had a tweet saying the main character had pronouns. Well, yeah, that's stupid beyond all recognition. I agree with you hundred <laughs> percent. I'm still gonna I'm still gonna play that game and enjoy it and just ignore it. Yeah, I'm not gonna play. Man, yeah. they, they they couldn't even make the new battlegrounds as good as the old battlegrounds. Battlegrounds? Or uh battle battlefront? Battlefront, battle battle yeah. Yeah, that was a pretty bad game. I mean, geez, you've got all you got so much money. You got all these people, you know, all this talent. I've got my friend works on Star Wars stuff or did. I don't know if he still does. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, they canceled like a ton of games. They had like all these games that were gonna come out and because of oh, dude. That, movies, Lucasfilm they canceled a ton of games. Uh, Lucas Arts was pretty amazing back in the day. By the way, that's probably secret, so nobody's saying anything. What? Oh, what? <laughs> well, I guess I didn't tell you any specific games. Never mind. Oh, I don't know. That 1313 looked good. I'll always regret that one getting canceled. Oh, was that the one where they had the, the video of them on the, like, the lift? Yep. Oh, yeah, that looked great. And they weren't saying it at the time, but it was a Boba Fett game. And it was also the first look at the uh, Xbox One, PlayStation 4 generation. Hmm. I remember when the Force Unleashed, um, the the engine for that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. The stuff they could do with those physics. It was un unbelievable. Yep, too bad they couldn't make a good game around it. Yeah, right? <laughs> it was a tech demo. Yeah, I know, but it's like, man, that tech alone would have made like graphics graphics work for like movies and stuff so much cheaper. Oh yeah. Well and they they really swung for the fences on that. They had the uh pulling down the star destroyer yeah. thing. Yeah. That that put people on notice. They just couldn't couldn't hit that home run, you know. I didn't get it that that Darth Vader was supposed to be like this super powerful dude in the force, and yet Star Killer is like pulling Star Destroyers out of the air. It, it was like uh, I don't know. It was like Dragon Ball Z, you know. Right. Like and I guess oh, we can excuse it in a in a video game, but it's like. You can't make that canon. Yeah, that was it, unprecedented. I mean, pretty soon you're going to have like someone raising people from the dead and stuff. And it's like... Oh, wait. Yeah, we did that. Uh... <laughs> that dude broke Star Wars worse than Ray. Um, at least he looked cool doing it. It did look cool. Yeah. That that scene was visually epic. Yeah, much cooler than anything Ray ever did. She's pretty though. Yeah, yeah she's a good she actress. Was. She's quite comely. And a good actress. Very Fine. much so. Actress. That's the thing. So much talent. Gosh, here we go freaking talking about Star Wars now. Dang gum it. I I really like Jim Lee drawing the Last Jedi for the adaptation. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Smack somebody's mama. Uh, what time is it? I don't know if I'm going to stay up and finish this. One twelve. Oh, all right. I finished the main panel. That's the money shot right there. It's all right. Looks all right. Yeah, it is the money shot of this page, anyways. This page. The money is in the bank. I'll have you know she killed Palpatine single-handedly. <laughs> and then her breath was so bad she killed Kylo Ren in a kiss. Uh, why you guys gotta hate? Why you gotta be so mean? And then, you know, she also uh, stabbed Kylo Ren because uh, Princess Leia... Uh, forget it. I'm not gonna talk about it. So, there you go. Quill, brush, mostly brush. Backgrounds are a lot of quill. 
But that main figure is almost all that brush. Boring. Boring. Not too shabby. Not too shabby. I like the hair. Yeah, I think I'm gonna stick with trying to do this this uh this free form Kim Jung Gi slash Matthew Weldon thing. It worked uh, well. It did work well. I think so too. Did you no. see the previous things? No. Well, here's a uh... <laughs> finished this up last night. Oh yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. It looks like an anime Lord of the Rings. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> uh, this is the page right before it. Where they're being surrounded. Oh, there's that guy. There's that guy swinging his sword around like his a name... madman. What's his name? It's uh, Jim. Gonna... Yeah. Jim. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> The page before that, and then the page before that is the big splishy splash. 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 He was taking the bath. Oh, that's the guy again. That's the guy again. So that's page forty. So I'm on page forty. Forty-one, forty-two. This is page forty-three. I should probably write that in the corner. Page forty-three out of forty-eight. I hate Cecil. 48. So I got four and a half more pages to go. Well, I just have to ink this. So four and four and a quarter more pages to go. And then we're off to the races. You say next week is the announcement? Uh, I hope so. I, I told them the sooner the better. So uh, whenever he's done editing that video together. Um, I'm sure he will let me know. Just checking my Discord and seeing if he said anything. But nope. He's in the Discord, huh? He's in my Discord. Really? Not, I mean, I don't mean he's in my Discord in the group. I mean, he's he and I talk through Discord. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um, because he's not always on Twitter. Getting close to that announcement and launch. That is correct. I hate Cecil. We are going to be there. The launch is uh, November 1st. The announcement, again, the sooner the better. Um, yeah, I can't wait, man. I cannot wait to see how this does. I can't wait to see how, how the cross-promotion of the channel does. How everything just kind of works together. And uh, Do you have a welcome video for the new people? No. Hey, if you're coming over from this channel. Yeah. Stop I and am. take a look around. We've got how-to videos. We've got drawing videos. And uh, yeah, I have to go through once once this happens and go through and change all the names and make a whole playlist of, of the, the streams where I'm working on this. Yes. How is this going to work? You're going to point us to his channel? Well, I'll certainly tell you what his channel is, but uh, he'll be pointing people to my channel, which will be the benefit of me working on his book. And so, and then, yeah, I will definitely be promoting the, the Indiegogo from my end as well as from his end. So all of my guys, make sure you use my link to buy the book, to back the book. <laughs> I want to, I want to make something of a dent in his, in his referrals page. Yes, and I want to see a comic book, and not, not as much baseball caps. Not a who's a what's a now? I, I really don't want to see any more COVID masks on these comic campaigns. COVID masks? Oh, yeah. I gotcha. I gotcha. They're, they're ugly. And we're all tired of the quarantine, so stop it. You're stupid. Stop all right, it. I'm going to wrap this up, everybody. Thank you for being here. It's time to go. No! I'm sorry, but that's just the case. Believe it! <laughs>
All right, everybody, we will see you uh, later. Please like, subscribe, share, tell a friend, tell a family member, tell a random stranger that they should be subscribed to blacklistuniverse.com and backing all my projects. Uh, Magnificent 7 is still available now. I'll, I'm not sure when I'm going to shut that down, but uh, it's there. So anyways, God bless. Good night and good Come by for the bullpen fire. tomorrow. Bullpen tomorrow night. Late, late. Tomorrow, well, I don't know, nine o'clock, something like that. All right. Yeah, look out for I kind of believe on my channel. Jalapeno milk. Jalapeno milk.